We are back uh, here with the, the program that we are running today. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy to announce the director of the cleaners, um, Hans Block and Moritz Riesenwick. They are both uh, German directors, uh, graduated from uh, the Academy for Dramatic Arts in Berlin. And uh, you have been working together since 2007 under the name of Lacoon. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, I mean, we thought it was really important to have them in the context of our event because we have been speaking a lot about uh, hate speech, uh, misinformation, the control and the uh, power behind social media. And uh, with their film um, that they are going to speak about, uh, we will do a journey uh, on what is uh, in the shadow of, of the Facebook uh, and social media cleaning and filtering. So we thought that this kind of topic was really important uh, for our events, also because I think uh, it's not a topic that is easily addressed. That is why I consider your film really important uh, for this, uh, and uh, I'm happy to invite also all the public to ask you many questions. And I also wanted to mention this will be probably something that you will touch uh, in your discussion, uh, because uh, uh, Moritz also wrote a book that is called Digitale Drex Arbeit, wie uns Facebook and Co. von der Bosen Erlosen, that I translated into, I don't know if it's the right translation, uh, Digital Dirty Work, how Facebook and, and Co. company uh, redeem us from the evil. Is that the correct translation? Maybe. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I leave the word to them. They will speak for around 25 minutes, and then we will open to question answer. Uh, then we will come back with the panel about the ideology and culture behind hate speech. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for being here on such a warm summer day. Um, yeah, but as the world is as it is in these days, I think it really makes sense to, to gather here and to uh, address some topics. And um, yeah, now uh, our film is in, in cinemas, uh, but it was a long journey to get there. We are actually theater makers originally, Hans and me, and we've studied at the Academy of Dramatic Arts, as you have already said. And um, so the research for this film also started as a research for theater because we um, find it quite interesting to develop theater out of um, researchers instead of actual plays. And um, it was um, one of these topics which seemed us especially interesting because it's so hard to picture it. Because normally digital, digital topics are very hard to, um, to, to be told in films or to be told in, on stages. And um, so we named ourselves after uh, the Trojan seer, La Orcon, uh, who was uh, the first and maybe only one who um, revealed uh, the, the true nature of the Trojan horse, uh, as we all know. And um, that is somebody who uh, impressed us and uh, who we want to orientate after. Um, so this is kind of what we try with this topic too, to find a way to picture it, though it's actually not really perfectly made for, um, for a film. You know, you have people staring on screens, uh, clicking on mouses. This doesn't seem like the perfect um, topic for a film. So we needed to find ways how to narrate it. And um, I hope we can um, kind of uh, briefly sum it up uh, how we try to to find a way how to narrate it, which is uh, made for non-techies and techies and for uh, like just a regular audience too. So we will show you in our presentation a few snippets of, of, of scenes of our film. And I start with uh, actually the starting point uh, where the research for both of us started. It was in 2013 when we heard about um, a case when a child abuse video went online on Facebook and it stayed there for a while. 
and it got 16,000 likes and, and a lot of shares. And we heard about that case and we asked ourselves, why is that happening? Because we all know that material like this is online, but not very often on social media sites. So we start to ask ourselves, is there someone who's filtering uh, the social media site? Is there someone who's curating or deciding what we are supposed to see or not? Um, and then we, we started researching and we got in contact with Sarah T. Roberts. She's a media scientist uh, in the States. And she told us uh, that this work is done by humans because we thought before it's maybe an algorithm doing that job or uh, uh, machine learning, uh, but it's not. Um, and the most interesting thing was that uh, uh, the main spot for content moderation, uh, that's called, like if you're filtering the web, so it's called content moderation, uh, is based uh, in the developing world. And there are like thousands, uh, ten thousands of, of unknown hidden people sitting in front of a screen every day, eight to ten hour, and deciding about what we are supposed to see and not. And that was very interesting for us and we, we decided to, to start researching and we tried to get in contact with these workers and that was really not easy because uh, the industry is very, very secretly fee. Um, first, we started research in Berlin and we tried to find out what kind of uh, uh, outsourcing company is doing the service for Facebook, Google or Twitter. And that was like a jungle of, of hundreds of, of companies with uh, names you never heard about. And also the job description is named like community operations analyst, data analyst, things like that, which not really describe uh, uh, the nature of the job, the dirtiest job of the internet, we would say. And then we've traveled to Manila um, and um, we are facing a lot of problems to get in contact with these workers because the companies have like private polices protecting the workers not to talk about the work. Uh, for example, they, they are forced to use code words. Uh, instead of saying I work for Facebook as a content moderator, they have to say I'm working for the Honey Badger project, like a small tiny animal in the desert. Um, and also there's uh, a lot of repris reprisals that uh, the workers are facing when they talk about the work because all of them are uh, signing non-disclosure agreements not to talk about what they do, not to talk about what they see every day. Uh, and that makes us even more curious to, to, to get in contact with these workers. And maybe uh, we show you the first snippet of the film. They need to be anonymous because we have a contract to sign in. We are not allowed to declare whom we are working with. The reason why I speak to you is because the world should know that we are here. There is somebody who's checking the social media. We are doing our best to make this platform safe for, for all of them. You could probably already see it's um, very much based on the people who do this job because um, one of the first findings we had was that um, actually the guidelines um, Facebook and these social media sites always present as if they were objective and could just be executed by, by uh, low-waged workers without any problem that is actually the biggest fake of all. It's, it's not at all objective. It's something you really need to interpret. Um, so you really need a lot of understanding about the context of the content. Um, come in sometimes from countries you've never been to or even heard about. Um, sometimes it's about irony, about satire, it, to decide if something is newsworthy or not, if something is art or not. This is sometimes really, really, or in most of the cases, really, really difficult. So to us, it seemed crucial to find out who are the people who take all these decisions within a few seconds. So that made us curious about the protagonists, so that is why they are now in the core of our film. Um, and one of and that's why it's so interesting where this work is, uh, is done. 
And um, um, of course, there are other spots of content moderation uh, all around the world. For example, I, I guess you heard about the company in Berlin is doing that uh, work as well in Spandau, Avato. But Manila is by far the biggest spot of content moderation. And it was also the first spot of content moderation. Um, because in 2007, Facebook decided to, um, to hire people to do that kind of work to have a healthy environment. I don't know if you remember uh, sites like MySpace. Uh, they did it the other way around. Whenever you, uh, uh, you've been there, it's full of spam, it's full of pornography. And, and Facebook decided to make it different, to, to try to build a safe and healthy environment, so Facebook uh, told us. Um, and all the workers um, now deciding about the content all around the world. And uh, this is one small scene where you can see uh, that it's very important who is deciding what uh, to delete or not. Delete. Ignore. Delete. Hmm. Hmm. All right, safe to delete. Delete. Ignore. Oh, it's delete. Ah, delete. Delete. Mm. January 2016, I painted a piece of Donald Trump with a small penis called Make America Great Again. And it went viral and millions of people shared it over across many social platforms and a few days later he mentioned his penis size on a debate and i remember my friend saying she she called me and she was like did you just make donald trump talk about his penis size on a debate and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. All right. I pushed it on my Facebook page. And within three days, it had something like 50 million shares and over so many social platforms. It just went crazy. And I had no idea it would go that, that far. <laughs> this is Donald Trump in a nude. He is uh, not a strong enough leader to handle. That's why his penis is somehow small. He's not that um, manly enough to handle a huge um, task as a president of America. It's delete. Why? It degrades Donald Trump personality, so it must be deleted. Bilang content moderator, kailangan meron kang sarili mong prinsipyo. Ikaw mismo magde-decide kung tatanggapin mo ba yung picture na yon na makita o hindi. So, number one grave error is yung makapag-approve ka ng nude photos. Kung boobs, kung ari ng lalaki, bawal na bawal. Yeah, that was uh, one example in which uh, you could see that actually the belief, the Catholicism um, of this 
um, content moderator is actually influencing directly the way she decides about certain certain content. And we had a lot of cases like this. Um, there was even one content moderator we eventually couldn't capture um, who who was making a, um, an education for becoming a priest at the same time of, of working as a content moderator. So we really got into conflict. And this is not a coincidence. Um, the Catholicism is quite strong in the Philippines. It's over 90% um, of the people is Catholic and a lot of them are strong believers. Um, which is due to the fact that the Spanish have colonized the Philippines for over the, uh, 300 years. Um, and which is now used as a, as a pro fact um, by, by these uh, companies. They, they argue that by this fact, the content moderators know best what we, the Western users, like or dislike uh, because they are so close to us culturally. That is the argue. That's, that's the way they argue. Um, but of course, Christianity um, has a very different meaning for them than for us uh, here, um, or for most of us, I would say. Um, there are crucifixions one hour away from Manila um, every year. Um, people um, wear T-shirts sometimes with um, like quotes of the Bible uh, saying like, um, my faith makes me limitless, God makes me unstoppable. They, they share a lot of uh, quotes of the Bible on their Facebook uh, timelines and so on. So it, it's really influencing a, a lot on the way they think. And so even the job gets more to them than, than becomes more to them than ju just a m normal nine to five job. Uh, it becomes a mission for a lot of them. And it's beca it becomes a mission to sacrifice yourself for the sinners of the world and to get rid of the sins of the world because it helps you in um, being able to, to take all this, in a lot of cases, disturbing content and handle it on a daily basis. Otherwise, you wouldn't, would just not be able to do it if you didn't have such a strong prescript to do it. And there's also a second reason why the Philippines or Manila is a very interesting place um, um, where the perspective of the content moderators is very important and that's the political situations. Uh, two years ago, uh, Rodrigo Duterte became uh, president of uh, the Philippines and one of the quotes while he was campaigning for the election was, I will clean up. Um, and that means uh, that he has like uh, hundreds of, of, of dead squats on motorbikes uh, going uh, through the, uh, uh, the streets at night and uh, killing everyone who uh, seems like a drug addict, seems like he's dealing with drugs or he's a criminal or he's just a homeless. So this is also a very interesting thing which we recognized uh, by many of the workers that they're influenced by because they say it's better to, to clean um, um, uh, the social media sites than to have someone who's abusing the site. Um, and that is also in a way very uh, dangerous we think because when you just delete problems, when you just uh, make things invisible and not solving problems anymore, uh, uh, it's a very big danger for democracy. And here's another small snippet. <laughs> As a moderator, you should always be focused. In life, you should also focus. Focus on the good things. One day, they will be gone, the bad things. Because there is a promise of eternal happiness. The world that we are living in right now, I believe, it's not really healthy. In this world, there's really an evil who exists. We need to watch for it. We need to control it, good or bad.
what I'm seeing here is a police officer and then on the left hand side of this picture is a person who has a gun this is a police officer of the Philippines and I believe this is related to the extrajudicial killing as the media claims we don't know if it's really the police or their co-drug dealers who's killing them. Some believe it's really our president who's killing these people. Si Duterte, yung presidente namin, uh, ayaw niya sa drugs, ayaw niya sa masasamang loob. Ayaw sa presidente namin kung paano siya kung paano niya uh, ginagawang safe yung Pilipinas, ganun din ako sa ginagawa ko sa trabaho ko, sa mga user na gumagamit ng application. Hitler massacred 3 million Jews. Now, there is 3 million, there's a 3 million drug addict. There are. I'd be happy to slaughter him. At least, if Germany had Hitler, the Philippines would have, but, you know, my victims, I would like to be all criminals to finish the problem of my country and save the next generation from perdition. Salamat. Yeah, and that the decisions they take, they don't influence um, only users in the Philippines. That is very important to to state. Again, it's content coming from all over the world they're handling. It's the biggest um, plat biggest spot for content moderation worldwide, so they get content, mainly image-based content, videos, pictures of all kinds, um, sometimes very cruel and obvious stuff, uh, child abuse, um, um, all kinds of violence against uh, women in a lot of cases, um, a lot of violence against minorities, um, they have terror videos and so on, but at the, at the same time they also handle cases in which it's not that clear, um, cases in which it seems obvious how to handle them, um, but they definitely aren't. And I want to give one specific example, uh, which we thought about differently when we started researching. Um, because in a lot of cases they get videos from war zones and um, there are um, dead bodies in these, image, in these videos. So before we started researching in that field, we would have always suggested that these videos don't need to be seen. We don't need to be confronted with dead bodies in, in videos. And now after the research, we really think differently about this fact because we learned that, for example, there is one organization in London, it's called Air Wars. And uh, what they do is they archive videos um, people from Syria have taken by their mobiles um, and which document the, the, the results of airstrikes. Because in a lot of cases, these airstrikes hit civilians like, uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, schools or hospitals, for example. And the normal journalists, they are not able to really report about these um, outcomes of the airstrikes because they are in a lot of cases embedded. So they need to collaborate with the military uh, in, in these places. So they, are not, they don't even get to see these results of the airstrikes. So the world would not know about these airstrikes if people on the ground um, like citizen journalists uh, would not report about it. So, and for them, it's in a lot of cases the only platform they can use to share it with the world, to upload it on Facebook, to upload it on, on YouTube. So we learned how important it is for these citizen journalists to have a platform to share the fact um, of the war and to, to share the outcome of these airstrikes done by uh, the, the Russians by the US Americans or by, by Europeans. So, um, but whenever these videos appear on these social media sites, they take it down. In a lot of cases, they just take it down because they fear about um, users who could be disturbed by this kind of content. 
the Family Safety Institute is one of the NGOs influencing the policy making practices of um, of the platforms and they are, they are for example lobbying pretty much to make the platforms being available also for 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 children so that children could also use it um, because they argue that in a lot of cases they do it anyway so it needs to be safe for children but if this is the goal then the uh, utopian idea of a social media platform um, spreading the word spreading the truth is is over actually so it's it's really important to always question also the ob uh, obviously um, or the, the, the obvious cases or which we believe to be obvious but they are not yeah, and then just a short a second example where you can see the influences of so social media in the real world is in Myanmar where um, um, thousands of, of, of uh, people, the Rohingya, uh, that's the minority of Muslims in, in Myanmar, um, they're really dealing uh, with a very, very uh, strong situation right now because Facebook is amplifying the conflict there. Um, and there are so many uh, false information and, and fake news and, and outrage and hatreds against these minorities there that they really have to displace out of the country. And why is that? Because uh, one of the content moderators told us that they don't decide between which is true and which is a lie. So even if you, if you lie uh, in a post, for example, to, to, to spread false information against a minority, you are allowed to do that on Facebook. But this can lead to, uh, to a major problem, which you can see there. And maybe uh, one last, last statement from Tristan Harris, uh, which is also in our movie. Um, he's talking about the architecture of the platform, and then afterwards we can have a discussion. Well, one of the misconceptions is that human nature is human nature, and then technology is just this neutral tool. It's not amplifying anything. But this is not true, because technology does have a bias, and that bias that it's, it's, it has a goal. It's actually seeking a goal, and it's, it's the goal it's seeking is what will get the most number of people's attention. What tends to work on billions of people at, at successfully extracting their attention out of them and keeping it? Um, and not just getting the attention, but then getting them to share things. And so it turns out that outrage is really good at doing that. Whether Facebook wants to or not, they actually benefit at, at getting more attention when they show feeds that are filled with outrage versus if they said, let's not show those things. It amplifies that which is most divisive, that which is most outrageous, that which is most fearful. The whole environment tuned to, 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 to offer us the worst of our, ourselves. This last, uh, this last comment is, um, we think, especially important because you could, a lot of people argue that it's not the platforms, you can't make the platforms responsible for what's going on on the platforms. They are ju just providing um, a landscape and whatever users use it for, it's the responsibility for, of the users. And um, we would question this uh, thesis with, um, with uh, Harris and others, there are 20 to 30 former high-ranked uh, representatives of the big social media sites who were really sorry about what they helped building um, because they argue that architecture is never um, neutral and, and by building a certain a specific architecture of these platforms and giving it a specific design um, and nudging people in specific ways um, you, you, you motivate people in specific ways. So it's no wonder that there is so much uh, extreme content because uh, people are motivated that way. And uh, of course, we don't have the time now to um, explain it further or to, to discuss it further. But yeah, I would like to open the broader discussion about that um, film and about your imp first impressions on the snippets, uh, maybe, or questions or whatever comes up to your mind. Um, so, this is true for social media, but I think it, it's also true like for German TV. So, when you see a documentary about war, you'd never see dead bodies because they want to protect the people watching TV, but 
on the same side, you don't get to see all the horror that is actually there. So, I mean, there's a difference, and I guess maybe that's just like a comment, it's not really a question. Mm -hmm. But it's also, we, we should take this in consideration to like, what do we want the media to be? Or how can we um, change things? Like for G German TV, could I like call the station manager or could there be a platform to do so or so? Um, thanks a lot. It was really interesting. I was curious um, to know if you can tell anything about the. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Does it? Hello. <laughs> okay. Again, thank you very much. Um, I was curious if you could tell something about the education of these moderators. I was wondering, like, how much are they trained, or in what way did you get any insights on these kind of rules that they might have been given? What we ex <laughs> now my microphone <laughs> what we experienced when we researched there that there's um, um, there's uh, like a three to five day training for every worker and in this three to five days they have to really learn hundreds of rules hundreds of community style guidelines for example there's one um, uh, they have to learn 37 terrorist groups and they have to learn the flags and their sayings and and they have to make sure that they uh, uh, recognize the flags uh, in order to ban, for example, a terrorist group. But what we experienced there, that they are overwhelmed because it's not possible to, to learn uh, really properly like hundreds of rules within uh, five days. So in, in most of the cases, uh, the content moderators told us that they decide uh, out of a gut feeling. And then there's a second very um, shocking fact that they really have to deal with a huge amount of content every day and they have to hit a score every day. And for example, one of the moderators told us he has to uh, review 25,000 images every day. So if you, if you, you can uh, count that, that means you have to decide within one second, three seconds, five seconds uh, with every image, which is not enough to really contextualize the image or think about if it's proper to show or not. Sorry, I, I just want to ask you, uh, uh, I wanted to ask exactly, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, exactly that. So the effect uh, on the people, the workers, so of these thousands of tons of images, they have to look like a, a, in a second, and they have to to check it. So did you did you look up uh, about this psychological effect? Did you go through the, in this kind of uh, research also when you met them? And uh, I have another question, technical. I don't, I didn't understand at the beginning why there is this Manila. So. Uh, is that a second? Uh, um, is that, so, I mean, there is something here in Berlin, for instance, uh, and this one in, in Manila is searching before them or after them. There is a kind of second level of cleaning of the images uh, or uh, is just uh, the biggest one? And uh, all the work is doing by them or, or there, are, there are divided in different kind of places. Uh, I'm speaking about Facebook and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Instagram and stuff like that. Maybe just to answer the first question, we can show like a 30 seconds clip, the last one on your computer. I hope you have it. Wag kang magpapa-apekto sa video. Siyempre, kahit pa paano, hindi natin masapi eh. May mga ganun kasi, naapektohan ka ba sa mga nakikita mo?
that's not a single case. Uh, it's actually the, s the suicide rate in that industry is quite high. Um, and to, to answer the question about the psychological support they receive um, in Manila, um, most of the companies provide a certain um, psychological support in the way that there is a psychologist coming by from time to time. Um, and then they gather all the staff in a room and then the psychologist asks them, um, how do you guys feel? And that is what they told us, uh, how the companies define a psychological support for them. Um, so it's, it's actually a fake, it's uh, not appropriate at all. And there are additional facts. As the families of the workers are most of the time quite orthodox, quite traditional, um, most of the content moderators, they don't dare to talk to their families about what they do in their jobs because it would disturb them heavily. And um, they are the breadwinners of the families and they are proud about um, being able to finance um, the, the family members. They earn one to three dollars, which is for uh, per hour, which is for Filipino circumstances low, but okay to finance families living in the suburbs. Um, yeah, so so what they do is they they need to deal with the psychological impact on them completely alone because they have the contracts saying you're not allowed to talk to anybody. They have this pressure of the families and they uh, they have in a lot of cases also the society is not so aware about psychological problems. It's, it's, it's a country where still people are starving every day and um, w which have much more obvious problems than, than these. Yeah, and the, the second question about the procedure. Um, uh, first, um, just to make sure you got it right, there are two ways or two channels the content moderators uh, get uh, content. The first way is that a pre-filter, an algorithm, is checking uh, some kinds of uh, things, and they are trained, uh, for example, to recognize the shape of a sexual organ or if there's blood in an image or uh, stuff like that. And whenever the machine is recognized or analyzing stuff like that, the machine will send the content to the Philippines or to a content moderation spot. And the second way is that we as the user have the possibility to report or to flag content which we think it's not appropriate to show and then also the content is going to Manila. And just to have one more side fact because um, Facebook is always trying to saying that um, uh, in, in, in Manila they don't review German content and we experienced something different because uh, uh, two years ago when there was a very high rate of, of racist comments in Germany, uh, the content moderators in, in Manila, they had a special training on Nazi symbols, for example, and they come to us and told us, hey, now we know that 88 means Heil Hitler. And uh, if you see a rat in an image, you have to be careful be because it uh, means it's anti-Semitic. Or uh, oven is also very, uh, you have to be careful with that. So they also review German content in Manila. Uh, and uh, that's really shocking because they told us also that they use Google Translate when they're uh, not capable of, of understanding the language. Okay, um, thank you so much for, um, I guess I have to see the film ASAP and I think um, there is no surprise that the uh, content moderators are in such a um, country like um, the Philippines and there seems to be a parallelism of moral, uh, ri rigid and uh, fascist uh, tendency and uh, th the way of cleaning up. I would wanted to ask you, can you explain us quickly something about the scale and also about the chains, um, talking about Facebook, who decides from the official company of Facebook, how, good, how do, the ch do the chains go until we end up at the content moder moderators in Manila? And next to the Philippines, what other countries are there to clean up? I try to make it briefly. Um, the whole procedure is not very transparent, so um, we don't know everything, but we know some things. Um, there is a policy maker, 
she's called Monica Bickert. She's the boss of policy making uh, at Facebook. And every each of these uh, major social media sites has somebody like, like her. For YouTube, uh, for a long time it was Nicole Wong, we have now in our film, and uh, she also did it for Twitter afterwards. So she explains pretty much about the procedures and about specific requests by governments also to regulate certain content and block it. So and no spoiler. And how they react on it. Um, and um, they develop the guidelines. And the guidelines are sent to the outsourcing partners, to uh, third-party companies um, doing this service, this dirt work service for, for the social media sites, um, and hiring people for that on a bigger scale. Like um, for the Philippines, uh, we estimate that it's more than 10,000 people um, they have there, but we can't really um, make it countable because the companies don't share any information about it. Um, and then they have trainers and uh, they train them three to five days um, in recognizing the, the uh, criteria, recognizing the specific elements and images which, which make the, the images not being appropriate. Um, and then they are then they, uh, they start to work. So they have uh, specific um, specializations sometimes. Um, it depends that some people work in that field, work on, on self-harm, others work on terror, others work on, on uh, child pornography, uh, mostly, but um, it's, it's never only one area. It's, it's most of the time it's several. Uh, but and then they have a queue system, so specific queues are open to specific groups of the workers. Uh, like this, I can just um, tell it like this, and then they are not really controlled, which surprised us pretty much because it's such a scale uh, that only um, the the, um, the team leader can only control um, three percent. They told us of their decisions. Um, so uh, in Manila, so they they can only take some tests to make sure that the decisions are right. But in a lot of cases, if they are not, they are just executed and nobody would stop them. So, uh, thank you so uh, much. I'm very happy about the question. Maybe we can answer it right after the... Yeah. We will stay over there, okay? <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, thank you so much. We will stay around if you have some more questions. Yeah. Thank you. And... Thank you, thank you very much again. And I just want to say that we will do 15 minutes uh, uh, break and please come back. Then we will have a panel uh, entitled Facing Ideology and Strategies of Hate, Hate Speech, Online Violence and Digital Rights. So thanks a lot and uh, see you later. <laughs>